Hi Tenfold, it's Dylan here. I've just been struggling with this question. Can you help me out, please? Okay, thanks for helping me out, Tenfold. That they've just uploaded my wonderful team. We got meiosis, and it is for sexual reproduction. So we're going to go from diploid, and we're going to then reduce to haploid. Diploid means that in human cells we have double, or in all cells, we have double sets. So we've got two sets of chromosomes. When it is haploid, we only have one set. So that when we take haploid plus haploid, so the egg cell or ovum plus the little sperm cell, we then end up with fertilization and we end up with a diploid zygote. Okay. And the zygote will then develop into an embryo and we end up with a little bubba. Okay, so we got meiosis, we got our organism and let's see. So this is why we do it. It has to reduce from two sets of chromosomes to one set. If you look here at our labels, the first one, uh, let me get another color here. This first A, remember always do your, 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 your labels first. So this is your cell membrane. Okay, B, what is B? Look what you've got here. You've got two chromosomes that are together. So they are homologous chromosomes. Okay, now you don't have to say homologous pairs. They can't be homologous pairs. You're actually saying, uh, uh, um, by saying they're homologous chromosomes, it means that it's a pair. One from dad, one from mom. So <clears throat> you've got 22 autosomes, and you have from your mother and one sex chromosome, and from your dad the same. So when you take your, say, chromosome 21 from mom, chromosome 21 from dad, and you put the two together, those t the, the chromosomes have the same alleles. They have the same, for the same characteristics. Um, that's why they are homologous chromosomes. They are a pair. So if you say homologous chromosome pairs, it's like saying chromosome pair, chromosome pair. It it's, doesn't work. It's just homologous chromosomes. All right, now, C, that points to just one of these little guys here, which means it is a chromatid. Remember, two chromatids join with a centromere. And then D, those are spindle fibers. All right, now, d distinguishing what our diagrams are, let's see. Diagram one, what are we looking at? We've got two sets of chromosomes, so chromosome pairs lined up at the equator. If they're in the middle of the cell and at the equator, it means that this is going to be metaphase. But which one? Well, there are your chromosome pairs. So your homologous chromosomes, that means two rows. And when there are two rows, it means it is metaphase one. Whereas if we look here in contrast to diagram three, and I want to do it this way, is how many rows of chromosomes do I have? I only have a single row of chromosomes sitting at the equator. That means diagram three is metaphase two. Why? There's a single row. Here there is a double row. Metaphase one, two. Metaphase two, only one. Okay, and then diagram two, well, this is very clearly prophase. It's, it's early prophase one. Why? Crossing over hasn't taken place yet. All right, so let's now look at our questions. Provide labels for A, B, and D. So A, B, D. Let's quickly go back here. A is the membrane, B, homologous chromosomes, D, spindle fibers. So, so membrane, K, and B, homologous chromosomes. And D was the spindle fibers. Okay, now give two observable reasons why chromosome B, <laughs> look at this, give two observable reasons why chromosomes B 
above are regarded as homologous. They've just given you the answer to this question here. They are homologous chromosomes. <laughs> Why are they homologous chromosomes? Because, or, or how, two observable reasons. Uh, well, they're the same length, they're the same size, uh, they have centromeres in the same position, um, they're the same shape. So any of those, so let's just quickly write this down. So they have the same shape, same size, uh, you can say same length. Remember these are the things you can see. They have centromere, uh, centromere in same position. All of that tells you that they are homologous. All right, one from mom, one from dad. Identify the phases shown in diagrams one, two, and three. Well, I can remember what I wrote. So one was metaphase one. Two was pro, actually early, prophase one. Because crossing over hadn't taken place. Remember, you need crossing over for um, variation. And the third one was metaphase two. All right. Now, let's quickly check here. Give a reason um, for identifying the phase in diagram two. People, I told you, look here. You've only got one single row of chromosomes lined up at the equator. So, single row of chromosomes mm, lined up at the equator. Alrighty. And then uh, identify two events in meiosis that contribute to genetic variation. Well, I've actually mentioned them as we went through. One um, is crossing over. Okay, and crossing over you have in pro phase one. All right. And the second is um, random arrangement of chromosomes. at the equator. All right, so when is that? It's going to be in metaphase one and metaphase two. Okay, people?